Hi folks, I'm Nathan with Two Guys in a Ride and today I am here with Stefan and his 1988 BMW 325. That's right. So Stefan, tell us a little bit about this car uh, and uh, let's start maybe with why you got it. Why do you have a 325 Beamer as a 1988? Well, it was a mixture of a crime of opportunity. It was listed on Bring a Trailer as the website that many people are familiar with. I like Bring a Trailer because it comes with a built-in community and I'm not a mechanic myself. I dabble in electrics but um, um, I saw it, it didn't go very high and then I remembered that um, when I was a little kid in Germany where I'm from originally, there was a neighbor that worked on these Beamers in his garage and he was painting them, he was taking them apart, I'm sure he probably died from uh, you know, inhalation of the, the fumes a really, little early, but um, I always saw two or three in his yard, including these, and I just like the, the 80s style, the boxy, the boxiness of it. Yeah, that, that, that had a distinct style to it. I love that. Oh I would God. love to get rid of these stripes, but to my knowledge, what I've read is that the dealers at the time put them on and they're really hard to get off. Now, are those painted on or do the, are they the actual stripes? They're, they're, they're taped on, okay. but, but you know, they've been on there probably since 1988, so it's going to leave a trace. And I call the car the Silver Queen, obviously, because she is silver, and she's also named the assassin because when I picked her up in Wichita, Kansas last year, she did try to kill me on the way back to Minnesota. So tell, tell us tell us about this because there was an issue with the brakes. Right, I was on the interstate, I believe in Iowa, and all of a sudden all the brake warning lights come up. There's two, actually there may be three, I'm not sure. And I don't know if um, it was just my imagination or it was me, but the brakes started feeling soft. And as I was going 70, I got a little nervous and I, you know, took my foot off the accelerator and let it roll, looked around, and then there was a, luckily, a rest stop coming up. And I, I rolled out and I called the people that had sold, them, uh, sold me the car and said, hey, what's up? And the, the guy that sold it said, oh yeah, it's, it's, it's a false alarm, just disconnect this thing and reconnect it to go away. And I said, are you sure? And he said, yes. I did, it worked. So you were able to finish driving at home. So tell us a little bit, this would be, this is, uh, this was only produced, this particular model was only produced in 1980. From what I know, I'm sure there's going to be some Beamer heads out there that are going to correct me on this, but to my knowledge, this is what's called a Super Etta, uh, the 325, normally a 2.5 liter uh, six cylinder engine. And for one year, which I believe was 88, they made a 2.7 liter out of it because the Americans were complaining that these European cars weren't going fast enough. So I believe that was a, a one-year thing in '80. They offered it as a 2.7. Was yeah. there any any other differences between you know from that trim level, that special edition, or no? I don't think so. I don't. It's not a heavily spec car by German standards. It would be all the things that are electric on this car. You know, like the electric windows. Um, in Germany at the time, you wouldn't do this, especially with a basic car like this. And look, see this? This is where the manual crank would normally go. Oh, sure. And I can totally imagine the BMW BMW engineer going like, ah, oh, these damn Americans, they want everything electric. Well, we're not going to order a separate door card for you guys. We're just going to pop this thing in and put the buttons in the middle where they really don't belong. I've got to see. Now, above your window switch there, uh, I love it because I've got a 90 325 convertible and the folks who watch our channel have seen that. That's the window lockout switch, correct? I believe so. Which I, it is on my... Uh, I've always thought that was humorous because for that to be the window lockout, it's on the passenger side. It's right by the window switches. So it's just one of the little quirks I love about this car. It's just, it's, they're, it's, but they're so cool. Now, does your uh, computer, do you have an overhead computer yeah, too? Yeah, I have it, which is one of my favorite features. Okay. It's like 19, early 80s diagnostic computer up there. Yep. Um, so it's got 
same color lights for like nine different functions. Apparently, the concept of having multicolored lights wasn't, you know, and it was all that reddish orange color these are red red so the okay illumination of the dash is more orange right and these are red up there. and then your trip computer there above your fan speed is the same uh same little uh, very uh very basic uh, uh font in the little screen there when it yeah. pops up to very very computerized looking but again this is a late 80s uh, you know computer diagnostics yeah, people thought, you know, computers are the future, and then they showed up in, in cars all of a sudden. Not that everything that showed up made much sense. I think there's a couple of things in here like that diagnostic thing that doesn't make a ton of sense. In fact, the reason that I find that annoying is right now the car is missing one of the fog lights <laughs> because behind the fog light is the outside thermometer, which uh, is broken. Yep and it kept warning me in temperatures like this that we are at 20 below and i should drive carefully it keeps beeping <laughs> because that's why it has no fog light because I'm, I'm still working on, on re, oh, that re outside temp sensor that yeah. outside temp sensor now does your the, the all the gauges work does the uh the uh rpms and everything everything works attack. except for one okay and i'm glad that it doesn't work which is the uh fuel efficiency ah um, okay because this is, it would, it would constantly go from green to red, green to red, green to red. Highly annoying. Uh, this doesn't work. It's constantly green, however fast I drive, which I like anyways. I right. like that one. You're I right, mean, right. Whenever we drive a new car and, and it's got those features in there, mine goes like purple or red or gray or starts on fire. When he drives, it's always it, it green. I like green. to save money and economize. But I in want my a Beamer, of like that. in my Beamer though, I do take off. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the engine while we have it okay. popped here? Yeah. So the engine's rock solid. The transmission automatic is um, the weaker spot. You know, it's it's an old automatic. But I also think the automatic is the reason that this car survived because a lot of these 30 series, as they're called ended up being raced by young guys on the weekend and the young guys wanted a two-door and they wanted a stick shift they do is... make an incredible track day car but again it was a crime of opportunity you know this came up and bring a trailer people weren't bidding on it i thought this looks pretty solid the comments also were like this is a solid car and i figured hey I'll, I'll do it. So uh, as, there is a little story to the mileage uh, odometer on the car. Um, so Stefan, is it safe to say that you think the car has around 150,000 miles on it? That is safe to say. I won't oh. go any further. <laughs> okay. So tell us a little bit about the story about the why you are uncertain about the mileage on this car. Well, because nobody knows really. It's on, on Bring a Trailer. This is known as TMU, Total Miles Unknown. Um, the odometer says uh, 22,000 miles which is of course not true right. um, what I know and I've heard from the previous owners who own a BMW shop in, in Wichita is that the cluster was changed at least uh, at least once and they set it back to zero obviously when they put mm -hmm. the new one in and I looked at the Carfax of course before getting serious about it and at some point the miles go backwards in the DMV records so obviously somebody at the DMV you know put the wrong digits somewhere and so to cut a long story short nobody knows all the mechanics that have looked at it say 150 160 seems realistic all right well, Stefan, thank you so much uh, for showing us your 1988 BMW, and uh, we appreciate your time and your story. Thank you. It was nice to meet you.